Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for Taz McCarthy. This one is an updated video on Google SketchUp plugins. There was a lot of comments in the previous video with people wanting to know more details about them. Fortunately, I've just gone through and reinstalled SketchUp and reinstalled and reevaluated all the plugins I was using. And as I did that, I spent a fair bit of time making this Excel spreadsheet with the name of the plugin, the version, the files added to the plugin directory, where it's found to activate it inside SketchUp, what it does, um, the author, and a link in where to get it. So I'll put up this Excel file in the description of the video at some stage. So I'll try and go through these really quickly so the video is not too long, but these are, out of all the plugins I've looked at and for my particular uses that have been the most valuable for me. So the first one, the first series are by an author called Frito6 and he posts all of his plugins on the Sketchucation website. Now a lot of them require this library, so once you install the, the libfrito6 library, it won't actually add anything to SketchUp by itself, but it's needed to run all of the next ones I'm about to show you. Okay, first one is Frito Scale. This is a scaling tool, but it has a lot of extra commands for doing fancy things. So here's the toolbar here. For instance, we've got things like this bending tool here, which is very different to the normal SketchUp functionality. Now, all the Frito, Frito 6 plugins, he has video tutorials and PDFs for instructions explaining each one. So I'll go through his really quickly. But this is a set of tools that extends the usual push pull and the move and the scale tools to have a lot more detail and a lot more control over what you can do. As you can see that shape there is definitely not possible using the normal plugins. The next one, Round Corner, a very useful tool and something that SketchUp is missing from its native tool sets is the ability to add a round corner onto something easily after you've already made it. So with this tool, the toolbar, these three here, Apparently it doesn't want to work because uh, we're in a group. So I selected this top and all of the sides touching that. I click to put in my diameter that I want and it gives me a green preview line as to where it's going to make the curve and then you can see here it's added a nice rounded edge. So that also comes in two other versions and it's really useful. You can do it line by line or you can select the whole thing and it'll do every one that it can find. Next one is Curve Aloft, which is really powerful and will perhaps be a little bit hard to show exactly what it does very quickly. But we'll have a quick go here. So if we have two different shapes here, some of the different modes we have, and this is the toolbar. Uh, to join up some different profiles, that's the one. And it will join them up. We have a whole lot of options here for making things a tangent, changing values to get different amounts of curve, different amount of twist, all sorts of things like that. So this is a plugin where you really have to look at the documentation that Frito provides on its website. On Sketchucation, but extremely valuable plugin to replace, well, to add tools that are really missing compared to pro proper professional programs such as SolidWorks. Next one, tools on surface. Now, if I wanted to divide the sh surface of this, it's pretty much impossible to do so, but with this next plugin, it becomes entirely possible. This lets us draw 2D geometry, except it will snap it onto, that's a bad example make this smaller it will contour onto the surface so now if I want to color this section a different color you can see that it's split it up and it's snapped that rectangle or all those other tools onto the 3d organic surface very useful next one joint push pull generally the push pull tool will let us only do one at a time but a simple use 
for this if we make a quick copy of this over here you can see in its most basic form joint push pull will allow us to do both of these at once but where it really works out well and hopefully it doesn't slow down the computer too much is to do it on a nice round shape like this one here and you can see it does all the ones around it with a really organic shape it can really stuff up sometimes but generally it's a really nice tool to use if the geometry you're using isn't too complicated next one Frito tools now this comes with a whole bunch of things revert curve curve she report label area construct face normal mark vertices count faces side by side remove lonely verse vertices through paint reverse orient faces now the main one I wanted this for is the through paint say we had our shape like we had before with a curve traditionally adding a texture to it is really hard to do so I wanted to do um, a brick pattern across the top here using the paint bucket it's going to segment it into all the little pieces and it's going to look really ugly so I've set this up so as soon as I hit the normal paint bucket it loads the extra tool set and hopefully this won't take too long to do we'll select a texture and we'll add it here and you can see it actually curves the texture around the surface to make it look as natural as possible which is a massive step up another thing it does once you've applied something you can very quickly and easily click and rotate that texture or change the scaling I think with arrow keys I'm not sure but you can move the texture around so you need to fine tune the position of how it appears on the object and that is an extremely powerful plugin compared to the native paint tool in SketchUp okay another author that I like the plugins of and I've used quite a few his name is Teague he also posts up on Sketchucation um, one carrying over from the first video is the work plane you're most likely at some stage come across a situation where you're trying to draw a flat shape and you get to the end and you wondered why it hasn't filled in and then all of a sudden you go sideways and you see it's all over the place so the work plane tool lets you put in a flat plane to draw in, almost like a piece of paper in space so I double click to confirm and you can see it's put in this flat plane so now when I'm trying to draw that exact same shape it's snapping to it for me and it's staying nice and flat and filling in these are really easy to then delete once you finish with them and you know you've got that really nice shape that fills in for you so that's a really simple but a really useful tool next one purge all if you're designing something particularly complicated and you've changed the color an awful lot or you've made components and then they're no longer in the document going to purge all will go through and delete anything that's not being used in the document which makes the file a lot smaller so that's a nice useful plugin. You might not use it all the time depending on how complex the modeling you're doing is, but if you're doing a complex model, that's something that'll come in handy a lot. Mirror, something that probably should have been in SketchUp from the beginning. I think it only works with groups, so we'll make this a group. No, it works with either, but groups are a bit safer to use apparently. Click it, click the mirror, and then just like when we did the work plane, we put in three points and then it mirrors it across and we either delete the original one or don't so if you're doing something really complicated often it's best to model just one side and then mirror the other version and if you do this as a component I'm quite sure that any changes that you make on here will then be instantly reflected like they normally do with components so that's quite a nice little one to save time manifold is I've installed this because I've started doing some 3d printing um, on this it's probably not going to do too much we'll just test it but basically it's a plugin that looks through something and it looks for holes so basically when you're 3d printing you need solid shape so it'll look for holes and then it will try and fill them in in this case it seems to be successful so it's made a copy over here and it showed us what it's added in it's filled in this hole here on a really complicated shape the script takes a very long time to run but as you can imagine finding a tiny hole manually is going to take quite a lot of time so it could be very useful if you're doing some 3d printing 
Next one, more along those lines. STL or DXF export. Uh, recently I've been working on a project where I was laser cutting some files. So I would have the profile, say it was this. I would copy that and then switch to a separate document and paste in all the flat 2D shapes. Now the laser cutter needed DXF format. So all I had to do was use this plugin and then I could come up to tools, export, and then put it in millimeters oops, and change it to these first four options are all to do with DXF. Now if you need an STL file for 3D printing you can do the same thing select what you want come up to here and on the second option pick STL so that adds a lot of exporting power to sketch up so you can use it for 3D printing for laser cutting things like that. Next one import OBJ object file format with materials. So this one was originally done by Jim Foltz and then worked on by TIG. And basically I've been getting into some 3D scanning to go with the 3D printing lately. And the software I'm using, David Scan, saves in the .obj format. So that just lets you import 3D scans into SketchUp. At the moment I found that really slow and it crashes a lot, but there's not really any other options, so I've stuck with that and that's up in the plugin plugin menu, object importer, and then click this and pick your file. Progress bar, um, some of the other ones on this list require it, so you install it and you don't actually see anything until you're using the other plugin. Bull tools, this is um, the f one of the first plugins I've actually paid for. I was using a free one which is similar and I think Google SketchUp Pro does a similar thing but I didn't want to pay for Pro but the other one I was using wasn't quite good enough so I invested a few dollars in this. Basically the way this works if we make a copy of this is by joining or subtracting or adding different groups together. So if I move this so these are overlapping. We can click the tool. This first one joins them together. And you can see they've become one thing. Try some of the other ones. Cuts it away. Or the third one leaves the places where they were um, interweaving with each other. It's really quick on a shape like that. It has had some mixed results on really complicated shapes, but it certainly beats any other method of doing it. Another one that costs money, subdivide and smooth. This is for organic modeling. This one here. So this is meant to mimic working with clay or something like that. So with this we'll split up this into the different shapes and then we hit this button Sorry, should be a group first to work properly. We'll hit this button. And basically what it's going to do is around all of these things. Now we get this box on the outside. Now every time I modify this box, it uses that as a guide to modify the shape inside. As you can see. When you're finally finished with it, this box is a group. So you can explode it, Del Oop. too much. After you explode it, you can delete and you're left with just your organic shape on the inside. So any other method of making this type of shape is going to be extremely hard. So I haven't had any projects using it yet, but I envisage that's going to be a really, really powerful plugin when I do have a project where I need to do organic shapes. Next one, make ortho views. This one's very good if you're doing a drawing that you need to lay out. So let's just make a really quick shape here. What do I want? I might do a triangle in the middle. Okay, so for this one, I select what I want and I come up to actually there's a little icon here. Perhaps it doesn't want to work. There we go. So it makes copies of them. It sets up an isometric one, top, front, bottom, both sides and back. So it'll lay it all out for you. Really, really fast way. 
of doing that. So it's just a visual effect with copies, but say you were perhaps doing a screenshot with something like that, you might find that really, really fast. Next one, stray lines. If you've been working on something really complicated and you're about to 3D print and you don't want any, any errors in your file, say I was working on this and I deleted part of the surface and you can see these two lines aren't actually doing anything now. If I want to check for those, I can select this and then I can go to plugins, stray lines and I can label them, select them, delete them or show only. So I'll do show only in this case. Apparently there was no stray lines, we'll try that one more time. And it hides everything else and so now I can see my lines and delete them. Handy for getting rid of errors and things like that. World, this is a handy one really small little one but really handy when you need to use it so I've got a shape and I don't quite snap here so it doesn't fill in and this might be a really tiny gap so I can select this go to plugins go to world it'll close it and it will turn it into a polyline and if you click yes here it will find a face as well so maybe you have something that won't quite close and make a surface that weld plugin might come in really handy for you Involute Gears. This one is from Oh yeah, CAD who make SU Podium rendering plugin, which I also use. And if you're doing gears, you just can't beat this plugin. It's under Draw. Involute Gear. You need to probably need to search exactly how these gears work, but the pitch radius and the number of teeth. You choose those. Hit OK, and then at the origin, it makes a grouped gear for you, which you can then move around extrude really good for 3d printing if you're doing mechanisms and things like that there's a second option that puts a little hole and a keyway in the middle to drive the gear but there's no other plugin that I found that's anything like that and for something so quick it's really powerful okay 2d fillet we looked earlier at the Frito 6 tool what if we're drawing a 2d shape On here and we know we'd like to do a fillet we can select the two lines make sure there's no th extra lines touching them I believe it's under tools fillet and it's just waiting down here for us to type in a radius and I think I did one that's way too small but you can see it's added a nice fillet there nice simple plug-in smart push pull this is best shown with an example so we have this rectangle here and then let's move this line to make the shape a little bit more interesting now say I wanted this to be taller normally the push-pull tool will just make it straight from here and you can see along this line here it doesn't really match the contours with smart push-pull when I do it you can see that that curve is continued there it's had some sort of glitch here with not filling in that surface but you can see the more times I do it, it continues to maintain whatever the geometry is. so if something was getting narrower it's going to continue to get narrower it's going to try and respect that geometry it's probably a poor example but in the right situation it comes in really handy Shape Bender, another simple one that's really powerful. Let's draw a random quick shape. So I wanted this to follow a nice curve. I set up a guideline and then I'll set up my arc that I want it to follow. I haven't used this one in a while, so hopefully I'll get it right. Okay, so I have to have this as a group and select it first. Now I think I pick my guideline and now I pick what I want it to bend to. And you can see that it's curved the shape around here. Now I think this should have actually been a little bit smaller for it to work how we expected, so we'll try that one more time. 
the length of the guideline and the end line is actually quite important for this one. If you look at the video tutorials for it, you'll see that, how that works. Doesn't want to work all of a sudden. Okay, anyway, you saw it the first time. Almost to the end, select outer edges. This one, so I had a really complicated shape, and instead of going through and clicking these outside bits, holding shift one by one, as far as I know, just got to remember where this one is, I can select a surface, and then under Chris Former Tools, select outer edges, and it doesn't want to do anything now, but it's meant to go around and select all the outside bits. If you look at the documentation after following the link, it explains it really well. Show all entities. Quite often if I've got something complicated, I might have certain things hidden. All this one does, I've set it up for a keyboard shortcut. It's, it shows everything back on the screen. So you might have forgot what you've hidden at some stage. You've got all different things hidden. You can just go to, I think it's under plugins. It's under one of those. This is why I've made this file. It is under plugins. Show wall and it'll show everything that's hidden in the document. Simple shell. Haven't really experimented with this one much yet, but say I wanted to make this hollow. I can click that and then go to simple shell. I tell it how thick I want it to be. And now hopefully, if we look inside here, you can just see it's delete two of the surfaces, it's actually turned this into a shell. So it's drawn a second one, three mils inside the first. But that works with really rounded shapes as well. Nice, really simple, handy plugin. Second last one, STL Importer. All this does is import STL files, which are used for 3D printing. So say you wanted to actually manipulate or edit one before you did a 3D print. It lets you import it, and that goes underneath the native import function here. So you just change it to STL by Jim Foltz and it brings in the file. It's been a little bit more reliable than the, the object importer thus far. Last one, Helix. If you're drawing a spiral, there's a way to do it step by step manually. But this one will we'll stick with whatever's here. We'll draw the helix for you. So a nice spiral going up. That might be a nice thing to model a screw thread or something like that. So like I said earlier, for all of these you can follow the link and quite often there'll be video documentation for exactly how it works or a PDF with instructions and things like that. Especially for some of these prominent people like Frito6 and Tig. So I'll add the file to the description shortly and some of these are pay ones but only about three or four at the most. So hopefully you get some good use and extend your SketchUp capabilities by using these.